Hello everybody out there in YouTube land. My name's Stephen, the Cinema Chimp, and this is... Greg, the Movie Man. And we hope to guide you through the world of cinema, books, TV, films, sexual well-being, dating, and whatever else comes to mind. Anything else I've missed, Greg? Um, sports, casually, I don't know. Maybe. Greg, hit the music. <laughs> Ado, as they say. But what? Before further ado, no. Without. Uh, Let's just do. What? Without further ado. Oh yeah, without further ado. Sorry yeah. about that. Let's just do what we should be doing all the time with each other. This week I've learned, and that's called checking in. So I'm just going to check in with you, <laughs> yeah. Greg. How are you? I'm quite. I'm good. I've got used to the, the my tooth not being there anymore. Obviously, we discussed this. Yeah. We, anyone who watches the show will know about the tooth. Um, yeah, it's, I'm used to it not being there now. It's, there's a little, just a little place, you know, a little rough bit of gum, not rough, a nice smoothed over bit of gum, but with a tiny little nubbin on the top, like a little nipple. I don't know what that's from, but uh, I don't think it's going away. So yeah, that's, that's, what, that's my new tooth, a little gummy nipple. It's nice. It's all right. I'm used to it. And are you going to ask about me? And <laughs> how have you been doing this week, Steve? Oh, thank you for asking. Uh, I went on a date in the week. Oh, yeah. Yep, met a nice young lady on one of the apps. Oh, yeah. And we went out and had a nice meal. Okay. Yeah. And hopefully we'll meet up again. Yeah, hopefully. You know, I, mean, you, I mean, was it a, did you, woo, you know, does it, was it one of those? Was it Sorry? A, what, <laughs> did you, <laughs> did you seal the deal? Did you make some sweet chimp love? Is, so again, is this, these dating, <laughs> is this a, again, is this a chimp dating app or is this a chimp for, and a human thing? No, it was a proper Tinder app. Yeah. I did what you said and used my own photo. But for chimps? No, for our humans. Uh, no. well, well, I've got back on Tinder as well. So um, it's been a while since, well, about a year really that I've, I've bothered using it. Um, I don't really like it. I don't, I don't really believe it. I don't believe you're going to find the one on Tinder. But then saying that, it's in this day and age, it's becoming more frequent, isn't it? And most people now are, meet, are do meet online and it's not... It used to be um, a sort of a stigma to it, I think. Seedy. Yeah, seedy, like dating apps. Everyone would go like, oh, we'll pretend we met on aisle six of the, sh of the supermarket and all this. But the, no one's, I don't think there's uh, people are as ashamed of it now. Do you not want to know how my day went? Uh, no, not, I'm not, no, I'm not that fast. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, I did, I'm sorry, I did. Yeah, of course I do. That's why I was asking if you, well, if you made sweet chimp love on the first night but that's no, just I silly do I mean, that. I mean, cause, cause sometimes do that. these tinder things steve it's it's there's see what, what i like to do is always see a girl at least twice so then it doesn't seem like oh you're just there for a one night thing i always do a two night thing so i'll say unless the sex was really terrible the first time then i'll always get you know it may as well do it twice but then there's no point continuing that if you don't have any more feelings beyond the sex really i think and then if you both know that there's nothing wrong with that there's this thing on tinder where you go um it says what you're looking for, and it says, like, long-term partner, just some fun. But then the, the main one is, well, that's, that's the one I ticked recently, was, um, yeah, looking for the real thing. Obviously, everyone is. Really, well, some people aren't, I'd, I'd imagine. They're just like, no, I just want to be a player forever. But me, a I'm looking... A plumber. <laughs> yeah, I just want to be a plumber forever. No, a player forever. Oh, a player. Um, but, yeah, but most people are looking for the real thing. But, so there's an option on Tinder where you can say, looking for the real thing, but up for a bit of fun too. So you can just meet up. So yeah, you go like, right, I know what this is. We don't really have much in common, but we want to fuck, right? Cool. And then you just fuck. And then you're like, cool, see you later. And that's, there should be more honesty like that. Because everyone who goes, I just want the one, they're not going to, they're sort of limiting themselves. They're, they're going to miss out on sex, basically. The, the good thing about Tinder is like, you can just meet up and have sex with someone if you're both on the same page. You know what I mean? It's, but I want the one. But you want the one and you're not, you're not the same as me necessarily. See, I mean, you're, not look, you're, looking for the, you're just looking for the one. You're looking for marriage, et cetera. Um, and not just to jump into bed with someone. Uh, well, we went to a place called Rococo Lounge. Oh, yeah. And I had tapas, but she ordered from the bar because I don't like climbing on the bar to order because people think it's not very hygienic. Oh, yeah. And yeah. sometimes I've been kicked out of places. Yeah, yeah, fair so enough. we just sat and chatted about her work and what I do. I didn't tell her about this. 
because I wasn't sure that I wanted her to know about it yet. The pod YouTube thing we do. All oh, right. So well, it's quite a good work. way. Well, I, I see. I, I've included photos of me doing this show on my t- Tinder profile. Then how's that gone? <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because uh, I did actually match with a very nice uh, young lady earlier. Uh, I was scrolling through. Well, I wasn't. I wasn't having much luck. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't having much luck. I changed my. Uh, I changed my profile picture. So my my previous Tinder profile. I've always used this photo. Um, and it's it's well anyone who's familiar with my channel will know this photo it's my Facebook photo it's a very good the best photo you've ever taken of yourself (laughs) yes yes exactly so it is me but I feel it's a little bit misleading because no one walks around holding a light at the exact right angle that I had to to take that photo and with a camera in the face and then edits themselves I didn't edit myself like I I mean it's my face but I've brought down cut like the blacks and stuff like that and uh increased the contrast and stuff i've made myself pop you know or out of the shadow it's a, you know, it's i'm a photographer so i mean i know how to take Whoa. i know how to take a good photo of myself the problem is i realize that well yeah it's kind of misleading you really want to save that photo so what i've done now is knock that photo to the back of the pile sort of thing so so they have to they see the photo of me like this with no head like because <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! So I've made, I've, I've <laughs> taken the nicest possible photo I can it's without Bruce a hat Willis. because I don't like having a sh- I don't really like being a bald man or like having a shaved head. So yeah, I don't. I'm not. I don't cover it up, but I mean, I do cover it up only because my, well, my head's cold. It's winter, so of course I cover it up now. I've just realised I haven't been talking to my mic for ages. The, the other photo is like me hiding the dark, and it's like, oh look how handsome I am. And it's like yes, it will draw people in, and they'll go like, oh. But then they they can only be disappointed when they meet me in real life. So I thought if I put up a photo like this, which is me, it's, a, it's an all right photo. It's the best photo I could t- take of me in natural light. Nice window light. Window light's always a good light. You don't want direct sunlight. It causes all too much contrast, etc. Um, yeah, just a nice plain photo of what I look like without a hat. Because, again, you could be misleading. If I remember when I first I started losing my hair a bit. Every single photo I had was me wearing a hat, a different hat or <laughs> whatever. And I remember some bird going, oh, well, you look good in a hat. <laughs> <laughs> so I suggest like, well, come on in, let's see, let's see your head then, and yeah, so let's see the goods. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I thought I'd be a bit more honest. Obviously, I've kept my super smooth photo in the the, the group of photos in the album down the line. So they be, so they go, oh, drawn in by a reasonable photo, like, but then they're like, oh, but he could look like that in the special light. Uh, I know what I think would make you look good. Yeah. Just trim some of your pubes and put them on your head. <laughs> it's tempting because I've got fucking loads of them. Uh, I mean, I, don't, I shave them off regularly, but I mean, they grow. Uh, there's no bold patches. It's yeah. So anyway, uh, I had tapas at Rococo Lounge with her. We chatted about work and what I did, and yeah. she chatted what she did, and we got on really well. I thought, but I've been messaging her this week, and she said she was busy, so she hasn't had time to message me back. Oh, okay. oh, that doesn't. Mm, that's what? Not, that's not a good sign. That's not a very good sign. If oh, I'm isn't it? No. Uh, well, not that's not at this stage. It should be all. Fu- it should be like, whoa, this is the uh, honeymoon period. Yeah, isn't I it? thought it was odd. Yeah, that that sounds like she's giving you the, the brush off, like the slow brush off. I've had it a, a oh. couple of times. Only a couple, obviously. <laughs> but um, oh. yeah. It's. I mean, uh, have you not ever given someone the brush off as well, Steve? I mean, that's the no. easiest way to know because if you've given someone the brush off, then you know. You know, you know what a brush off is because you know that's exactly what you'd say if you didn't yeah. want to see someone again. Yeah. So just, just don't worry about it, mate. Just. Uh, okay. Yeah. Suck it all in. Suck it off. Um, <sighs> suck it up. Uh, sorry. Suck it up. Right. Suck it. Out, suck it up. Puff it out and start again. Let's just change the subject. Yeah. That's getting me down. Yeah. Let's talk about the first thing I watched this week called. Milf Manor! <laughs> Yay! Well, that makes a change because you usually start with something about the Holocaust, so. Nah, I wanted to do something a bit more upbeat. Excellent. And I like an older lady, as you know. Oh, yeah. So I watch Milf Manor. Do you want to know what Milf Manor's about? I think I know. I know roughly what it's about. So basically, a bunch I of. I did tell you, didn't a I? Bunch of, yeah, a bunch of dudes, a bunch of dudes, a bunch of dudes, a bunch of young men, and their mums get together and then they all fuck each other. <laughs> right? Sort of, not quite. Uh. A load of a load of loads of women in their forties and fifties who are looking for love. They like younger men. They go to a Mexican island, like Love Island, in a villa. And yeah. when the screen comes back, it's all each other's sons. <laughs> so they have to date each other's sons. It does sound quite ah, fun. It I'm is absolutely horrific. <laughs> but I can't stop watching it. Well, I'm on episode four. Oh wow! I, well, I need to watch some of this with you, Steve, because it's yeah, it's piqued my interest. Put a clip up. Life has given me some curveballs. I think it's my time to find love. 
I was married for 14 years. I want to get a chance to do me a little. Young men have much more energy. They think out of the box. I want that. Especially in the bedroom. <laughs> I am in this amazing, beautiful mansion here in Mexico. This is a perfect place to find love. Welcome to the villa. You're about to embark on a dating experience like none other. Oh, let's go! I have an extremely high libido. Is that too much, Shane? I have an extremely high libido. Should I just have said high libido? Uh, ladies, where's all the men at? I'm ready to connect with somebody who doesn't really care how old I am. I'm just looking to have fun. Here we go. What the hell? It just got real. I, I wanted to know. So, is that the age limit? Do they have to be in their forties and fifties? They can't. They're, they're so like have like all the men involved. I assume they've. Uh, discussed like a predilection towards older women and they said yeah that's right they yeah. have yeah and that's, <laughs> that's kind of fucked up but it's not that, necessarily so... each other's mum so no <laughs> do the lads know each other no they've right. never met before that'd mums... be that'd be funny that'd be better if they some of them knew each other and they knew and they were like yeah i fancy my mate's mum can you get her involved in the show like should i just tell you what the first challenge is on the show and you can see what you think of this yes yes, yes. right so the first challenge is all the young men have to strip off to their waist and the women are blindfolded and have to rub their chest and then guess <laughs> whose is their son. How the fuck would they know? I mean, unless they touch their son's chest in his, you know I mean, when he's in his 20s all the time. Like, oh, all right, honey, I haven't seen you in a while. And they're just like, uh, rubbing his chest every time they see him. It's not like they're going to know what it feels like. They all knew apart from two. Oh, fuck me. Well, that's okay. And also, there's a guy on Do there. Do you think your mum would know... Well, I mean, I know your mum's dead now, but and she got her head ripped off by a digger in the Amazon. But if she was still alive, do you think she'd be able to? She know it? my fur. She know your know your fur, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of a downer that when you bring that up. Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> sorry, I, I don't know why I have to mention that every time I mention your mum. Sorry. Right. I could just so, talk about your mum. Yeah, they yeah. fill each other's chest. One of them has a really big dick, <laughs> and one of the mums <laughs> in her fifties. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Sorry, 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 sorry. How, how, like, one of them's got a really big dick. How do you know this? Is it disgust? Does he go? It's yeah. disgust. I'm, I'm like, he goes like, yeah. If I fuck one of these guys' mums, I'm gonna, I'm gonna destroy her vagina because I got a no, huge. No, I think penis. they see it. Oh, well, to be fair, mums have got probably bigger vaginas, so they can handle a big dick more than a younger lady. <laughs> You know I mean, mums. I mean, mums, they might, if they've had lots of kids, three, four kids, then uh, yeah, they can handle. They uh, usually older women are looking for a bigger dick, I think, than because younger women don't want to get stretched out before they've had a baby. I think. I well, don't know. I you mean, did they, say we talk about <laughs> sexual well-being, uh, and you know your stuff by the sound I of it. I don't know anything, but uh, <laughs> just uh, comment if you think that's right. <laughs> any ladies out there that watch? <laughs> Is that right? It sounds like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> you don't want it too big because it'll, you know, make you all too big, and then uh, then people will be like, "Oh, she's got a big fanny." And girls, look, as far as I look, mm. from what I've learned to understand, it's like girls like tight, like to have a tight. But they don't want to be known to have a big, like ca cavernous vagina. It's not cool. The same way dudes don't want to have a tiny penis, and and you don't want a combination of the two because then neither of you going to have any fun. Like you're not going to touch each other. You're just going to be like Ooh, doing the cement mixer. With your little What's wing the cement mixer, Greg? So that's when uh, a penis is too small for the vagina, and instead of going in and out, you do a, a circular motion like this. Like How a do mix you of know cement. what a cement mixer is? Because <laughs> I've worked on sites, many sites. Oh, it's yeah. something they do on site, then. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. Well, yeah, when I say worked on site, I mean I've had sex with other men where I've docked their I penises. I don't understand. And I've done the cement mix on them because uh, <laughs> they're <laughs> chaps, I... Um, uh, it's been widened out really big so like uh, have you heard of metotomy no <laughs> so it was like or, uh, th so I think it's known as space docking as well or no or was that when you throw, freeze a shit and you put it up someone I thought it was called sounding no it's just called docking metotomy is when a man puts his penis inside another man's penis where, whose japs eye hole is big enough Greg what's it's, sounding it, then sanding sounding oh sounding I don't know you have to teach me that that's one that's when a metal rod gets put down the end of a man's penis <laughs> right <laughs> Cool. And you just give little electric charges to it. Nah. Oh. They'd just be wanked off with a metal rod down the middle <laughs> oh, of a okay. penis. You can also electrocute it. I can, add, I can add something to it there. You can do all sorts. <laughs> uh, uh, should we steer away from this? No. I, it's good to Let's talk about sexual well-being. It certainly is. Spe <laughs>
<laughs> Especially when people's mums are involved. Right, right, let's talk about another movie. And I bet nobody's seen this film because we like to talk about movies we think you haven't seen. And it's called... Nothing Lasts Forever. Yes, it is. Go on then, you do this one. Uh, so it's all about the diamond industry, basically, and about... The new industry of synthetic diamonds. Well, you know when you hear about um, ash being turned into, it's like, oh, I got my mum turned into a diamond or whatever. Oh, just can I just yeah. say one thing? Yeah. Most people, when we watched it, we knew this as well. Yeah. Most people probably know by now that De Beers owned the diamond industry. Yeah. And it's all fake. And engagement rings are fake. Yeah. And it was all created. It's all propaganda. But this film goes into something else yeah. that people might not know about. Tell them about the factory. Oh, yeah, the factory. Yeah, so basically there's a factory in China that pumps out. So the way there's, you've got these machines that make synthetic diamonds and they compress ash. So they're, basically they're, they are the same thing, but they're not found in a natural way. So there's this big argument with like a lot of like old school jewelers and stuff like who uh, and, and De Beers, obviously, who are like, well, it's not, it hasn't got the, you know, it hasn't been, dug, no one's dug in a mine for it and spent hours looking for it or chopping it out. And, and that's it, basically. Otherwise, there's no, the synthetic diamonds actually can be made more perfect and look, and they look just the same. But anyway, the machines to make them, these big fucking heavy industrial machines that go, have to go, super pressers that compress ash. There's this factory in China that's, the, that's pumping these machines out, warehouse full of about a thousand of these machines. And they're just, They've got, yeah, they're just churning these machines out like the machines are making diamonds. They're making the machines to make diamonds. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah, so. But which also, the big twist of it is all the synthetic diamonds are now being mixed with the real diamonds. Yeah, and they have been for ages, and apparently it's something that everyone in the jewelry industry knows about. And so now the it's a bit like AR, it's like a bit like when an android becomes human. It's like, well, right, and if they become fully self aware, it's like, well, what is the difference? And if you're being sold, people just buy stuff a lot of the time they just buy stuff because it's got a label on it it is literally like as I said Ralph Lauren polo shirts of shitter quality than CNA like not CNA George Asda CNA hasn't been around <laughs> for like 35 years yeah sorry I meant George Asda I watched one of those uh, high street fucking high street supermarket shows or whatever like uh, what are they called shows where they do like rogue traders and shit like that yeah I like, know what yeah, you yeah, mean yeah, yeah. Oh, they've got a name anyway um and the other thing that, that uh, is so fake about all these diamonds is the origin story. Even the ones that they do find. So every diamond will have like, it was found in this lake by an African queen. or The African southern star. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. And they've all got these legendary the tales about them. The world's biggest diamond. Yeah, King Solomon's mine. It's queen so-and-so and blah, blah, blah and all this shit. And really, it's either just been made in a fucking lab or not a lab or just by his fucking machine in China or it was just dug out of a fucking quarry and that was it. Uh, so yeah it's, it's just bullshit just yeah diamonds are just bullshit I mean I, I've never uh, if I was really super rich like millionaire super millionaire I wouldn't buy diamonds I, I just wouldn't I'd be like but saying that there was one thing that Matey from De Beers did say which I don't know if it's true or not but he did say the one thing about the diamond industry even though it's all bullshit but if, all, if rich people can afford to pay for it then fucking more power to them go for it but it did create lots of uh, so you said like in the area where they're digging, they're digging that massive hole the massive mine in, in Africa uh They've created loads of work. Obviously, there's fuck loads of work. And where before there was only one doctor for every 3,000 people, there's a doctor for every 300 people, 30 people or something. So if that is all true, then De Beers have got a point there. They're like, well, okay, it's created jobs. Everything shades of grey. Yeah. Nothing's black and white. So that's quite interesting. But anyway, it's if you're interested in that, and it's got it's, the music's good in it, it's well made. It's just a very well made documentary. Yeah. Uh, that and made me think of uh, this. Yeah. A kiss on the lips may be quite continental, but oh, diamonds yeah. are a, a girl's, girl's best, best friend. friend. That's all I know. Yeah, that's the only bit I know of that as well. Right, so nothing lasts forever. Yep. You tell me what you would rate that film. Yep. Then I'll tell you what. I looked up IMDb and Ron Tomorrow's and I'll tell you what it got on okay, there. Cool. And we'll bring a picture up as well. I would give it... I'd give it... Oh, so I'll go... Because we're scoring out of 100 here with IMDb and because I know they do it in a different way. They do percent and six point whatever, but it's still ostensibly the same thing, isn't it? So I'm going to go with 84. And IMDb? No, that's my score. Then you tell me IMDb's. Oh, IMDb is 7 out of 10. Okay, so I scored it higher. And Rod's score is 100%. Oh, well, so, so I'm somewhere in between. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Documentaries always get a high score though. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I, mean, but I think that's a bit, uh, I don't know, IMDb. Mostly they do. Yeah. A bit sad. To tell you what, I'm, seven on IMDb is solid. Is is you know, I mean, it's a three and a half star. They don't see that's where uh, I think Empire and places like that. You do need you need a score out of a hundred, I think, because 
Why? There's a difference between a three and a half star and a four star. You know what I mean? Big oh, difference. Well. Yep. Before we move on to another movie, I've got a couple of questions to ask you. Yeah. I've been saving. Right, you know when you go out for the boys on a boys' night? Yeah. Do you ever take Viagra before you go out in case you get lucky? No, it doesn't work like that. See, oh. no, you're only meant to take Viagra once, sort of once you're in the process of stimulation. You sort of get stimulated and then, then you take the Viagra and then you'll be like, whoa, rock on Tommy for a while. But not, uh, I don't, I've taken, I've never taken it. But this is what I've heard. Oh, because in my head, I thought all the boys took Viagra and then go out for a boys' night. Well, I do know someone who's, I, th- I think, who's, who's got that kind of idea, <laughs> who's very keen on Viagra and was always trying to give them to me. I think he got the wrong idea about what they were for. I think he did think they were for a lad's night. He's like, go on, lads, we're out of together, all getting hard ons. That's what we do, isn't it? Just sit around with hard ons. The hard boys, yeah. We're the hard boys. Uh, girls, fuck off. We're the hard we're, There's blokes with erections here. <laughs> So you know Ken Barlow in Coronation <laughs> Street? <coughs> yes. Well, you don't know him, do you? No, Bill Roach. Ken Roach. Bill Roach. Bill Roach. William Bill Roach. Roach. William, William Roach. Roach. Yeah. William Roach. His son plays. Um, his son plays the king in Vi- in own Vikings. His king. His son plays the king of England for the most of the oh, first season. Yeah. Didn't Te- know that. Ted Roach, I think. No, that's he's. <laughs> that's Ted Roach. The, he's in the bill. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Bill Roach's yeah. son, Ted Roach, yeah. from the Bill. Yeah, it's weird. They look about the same age, but oh no, he's, he's dead. He must he? have had yeah. him when he was old. Yeah, <laughs> no, young. You mean? No. Oh, young. Really young when he was ten. Yeah. Uh, William Bill Roach claims to have slept with over a thousand women. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I guarantee nine hundred of them are prostitutes at least. But a hundred's still pretty good. Usually, when people say they've slept with loads of women, at least half of them are prostitutes. You sound if not jealous. More. No, I just, just experience. <laughs> no, that's the truth. I've slept with more real women than prostitutes. So, la di da. Aren't all uh, women real? Huh? Aren't all women real? Ah, uh, good point. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to say that prostitutes aren't real women. They don't look, deserve any. But uh, I, I don't. I've never slept with a prostitute. That's a joke. And he made a board game called Libel. And oh, it's not very good, but it's about a court case, and you can look it up. Libel, oh, right. put a picture up. Yeah, I will. But I mean, pet and bot will. Can you think of any other people that could make board games, like famous actors? Mm. Um. Let me help you out. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So I'm thinking uh. Ian Sterling would make a board game, and it would be <laughs> who can eat jelly the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> Who can eat jelly the fastest? Who can eat this jelly the fastest? Board game that comes with a timer. Let's eat this, this jelly as quick as we can. Nom 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 nom. It's not really a board game, is it, Ian? What? It's the best board game in own name. That's a bad impression of Ian Sterling. What was Jeremy Clarkson's board hey, game? Amy and Sterling. He's more like that, isn't he? I think. A bit of high, I don't know. Don't bother. No, no. What would Jeremy Clarkson's board game be? Um, something about. Mistreating women, uh, game of mistreating women, uh, monopolising women's st- stuff about women. I don't know. No, I'm not very good at this. Sorry, I can't think of game board games on earth. <laughs> women on farms. Women on farms. Yeah. Jeremy uh, Clarkson's award-winning board game. Yeah. The woman and the farm. <laughs> uh. A woman is given the chance to run a farm, and she runs it into the ground, according to Jeremy Clarkson, but not in real life, of course. Yeah. Right, okay, let's do another movie. Your go. Or my uh, go, but you've got the list. Yeah, I've got the list, so. Um, for your height only. For your height only. Now, this is suggested to us. We may as well give Bad Movie Bible a shout out. So, yeah, we found a YouTube channel called The Bad Movie Bible, and they talk about loads of comparisons of bad films, and we watched two of the bad films on I mean, there. It's, it's not that it's one guy, isn't it? But, I mean, yeah, they... I mean, they, I don't he know how many people involved. Stuff. He knows He fucking knows his stuff, yeah. So, um, it's good. So, yeah, we've, we we watched that, and there's some funny films brought up on there, because bad movie... Everyone likes a good, bad movie. He, he rates movies whether they're bad, bad, or bad, good, and all that, and it's, it's, well, it's anyway, good fun. Well, anyway, you can watch it, but, but that's anyway, not what we want to talk about. For your height only, it's a, it's a little dude. He's basically... A very tiny... Weng Weng. He's called Weng Weng, and he's a tiny guy. He's, plays, he's playing James Bond, but he's a tiny... What country is it set in? Is it Thailand? Malaysia? Something up India? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's it's an Asian country, and he's this little guy, and he's got, he's got a funny little Beatles monkey haircut, and he's adorable. And he basically just goes around kicking everyone in the bottom, because he's so short, he can't do normal James Bond moves, so he just turns up and kicks him in the shin 
once they go down he then kicks him in the bollocks or kicks him in the head it's great the thing I like about that film yeah. is because people say when James Bond has to change they say oh he can't be a woman he can't be black James Bond has to be like this or yeah. he has to be like well, that can't be a little Asian but a dude. like me Ooh, I'd love to be James Bond. Yeah. But now I've seen Wing Wing play James Bond. Exactly. I realise anyone can do it. Yeah, you could do it. You just need the right cast, the right scenes, and some toughness. Play and a, a trailer. And a friend to make the film for you. Let's tell them about the other one we watched, about Ben Silva. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is another... But this isn't actually... This is this is, uh, this is is bad, bad. But then... So it's bad, bad, but then it's good again. It's, yeah. It's not the same as For Your Height Only. I wouldn't say... I wouldn't class it in the same... Like, for Your Height Only is quite good bad it's a lot of production I mean a lot of it's watchable, into production. Really watchable. It's definitely watchable and there's I don't know what's this one called sorry the, yeah, sorry, the Liberator I've The read... Liberator yeah yeah with Ben Silver Ben yeah The Liberator I don't know if you're familiar with Neil Breen if anyone's familiar with Neil Breen uh, he's, he's a, a cult movie he, like Tommy Wazoo he's sort of like a cult a shit cult movie maker um, is that the right way to describe yeah, him? Yeah, and there's of, yeah. an Irish film like this as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. I forgot one, that's cool. But anyway, yes. this one is a boy, guy called Ben Gold something. What's the name of the man that made it? Well, yeah, I don't think it matters. It's Ben something. Well, he's, he's the main star. He's written, he's, he's done, you know, he's, he's done the story, but then this is what's funny about it because it's, the writing is terrible in it um, and he's still got someone else to write it. So I thought, I assumed it'd been written by him, but it's like, story by Ben, whatever. Directed, starring, and gets all the ladies, obviously Ben, whatever. Um, but then he got he drafted in a couple of buddies, and it's, it's still really shit, obviously. But it's funny, because they've just used words, they've watched a couple of uh, cop shows, and they've taken a cu- tiny couple of bits of dialogue. It's still really unrealistic, but you can tell that he heard that, he sort of read that, and was like, oh man, you guys know your shit, this is just like The Wire. And then it was like, yeah, brilliant. And then, oh God, yeah, it, it has to be seen to be believed. We, you, we just it look has it to be seen to be. They're both on YouTube yeah. as well. You can watch the whole film on YouTube. Yeah. It has to be seen to be believed. Just check them out. You, if you like a laugh, if you like, sh- you won't be disappointed. Shit things, um, yeah, if shit things make you laugh. Talking of James Bond. Yeah. Did you, I won't bother looking up the Ron Tomatoes for those ones. <laughs> yeah, the, but talking of James yeah. Bond, did you know? I found out this week yeah. that Roger Moore had a micro penis. That's not true. It's average size. Oh, was it? Yes. Oh, because I now, thought now. that was rather ironic. Don't be worried about my micro penis. I will do the cement mixer. Wee! Uh. Hey, Greg. Yeah. Can you say five adults, please, in your best voice if you worked getting some tickets for five adults? <laughs> if I wasn't getting tickets. For- no, you have to be getting tickets. Right. <laughs> Five adults, please. Yeah, you're good at that. I'm really confident. Yeah. Five adults, please. Oh yeah, no, yeah, no, that's no, quite, that, that's confident. Just, mm, just high, yeah. just high pitched, and they might think you're a child. It's, I'm, it's good to learn these things. Yeah. Talking of shows, I watched that thing about uh, autism in the week. Chris Packham. Oh yeah. And he said, "There's a lady on it, and you know what autistic people love them do? They have to mask. Have you heard of masking? Yeah, when well, you pretend to be someone you're not." Yeah, you pretend to be normal. Yeah. Well, not normal, but you have you to say... You can see Chris Packham doing it, and he's, but he's very good at it, because he's... I mean... Do you it? Do makes it makes sense now. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Yeah, I mean, I'm the best masker around. You see, you might think... I'm, well, actually, no, I don't think I am. I think I don't, I don't think, don't think anyone thinks I am normal. But I'm trying to... I'm, I am masking all the time, but I'm just not very good at it. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, it's weird though because now you, once you found out he's autistic, you're like, of course he is. No one's that interested in animals. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, it's like, oh, he's got yeah, he's, uh, uh, makes sense. Of course, but it's good. <laughs> but I like it. Um, I like it. He's that he cares that much about animals. So I, do I. And I also like the fact when he goes, he, he tried to put Chris Moyles into Room One Hundred uh, One, and he, he goes, I can't stand the mediocrity of him. I can't. <laughs> So he just, he just uh, everything he stands for. It, uh, he's just so rubbish. And I was like, oh, that's great. That's good. Spike Milligan tried to put Chris Evans in Room 101. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, yeah, years ago. Maybe people call Chris. Could be. I'm glad other people do great things, so I don't have to. Mm. I can just live my life and die, and I don't have to do anything. Because there's true. plenty of people out there that do all the entertaining and make stuff for me. Mm. So one of the people that makes stuff for me is this man right here who's working on his screenplay all the time. That's why he has the pen and the paper in front of him. So, so far it's called The Fade-In. Any updates this week, Greg, or have you been too busy? Yeah, no, so, yeah, The Fade-In, Internal Night, Night Time. Yeah, so, okay, 
dialogue. So I've got first line dialogue. It's me. Oh, cool. I come running in. I come running into Stephen's room. I knock on Stephen's door, but I don't wait for him to answer. This is all written in the directions. Uh, and I burst in and go, Steve, I've got a new idea for the show. Do you think your film will be like The Liberator? No. Uh, po- uh, uh, <laughs> no. No fucking way. Because, look, if all else... Fair, look, I'm going to write it well, at least. And then uh, if I have to get, you know, some really good actors in to play me and you, then uh, we'll do that. Tom Cruise can play me. Yeah. He's about your height. Yeah. Just <laughs> wear a monkey suit. Yeah. Um, that's it so far. But I've got I've got the first line. That's the actual first line of dialogue. So, I mean, I, we'll, we'll work on it from there. Coming together. Yeah. Right, okay, so let me say this to you. Yeah. I watched George Clark and his amazing Amazingly spaces. fat face. I mean, amazingly large, wide face. That's an amazing... I love what you've done with this space. I love what you've done with this space. I want to move in here. Can I move in with you? Is there room for my fat head? Well, you've missed out the thing <laughs> that I've noticed oh. he does. Oh, no, he's so... so wait, can I, just kind of, I just want to do an apology. I just want to apologise to... <laughs> Amelia Fox, just in case she watches this last week. I don't know. You, uh, it was made. It was pointing out to me that it was a bit cruel. Me saying that she goes like this. Oh, I didn't mean she does that all the time. She's a very talented, beautiful uh, actress, uh, lady. And uh, I was just suggesting that in the, the that silly show about uh, the thing that's based on Cold Case something, Cold Case or whatever, that she did do because she wasn't acting in it. She was just listening to people. So she did spend some time just going oh. Like that. So I was just, it was just uh, an extension Jesus of Jesus will forgive you. <laughs> I hope so. Please. Right, so uh, what yeah. George Clark does at the end of the segment is... I just wanted, the, reason oh, I said that, the reason I said that is because I... Well, no, because I said George Clark's amazingly fat face. I didn't mean fat face. It's just wider than it was when well, he first... don't say it then. But before, when he was on Channel 5 or while back or whatever, the first show he did, I saw some old stoves of him and he was thinner then. But his, fe- his head was his face was still relatively wide compared to his body. If you weren't so horrible about people all the time, I don't you wouldn't have to apologise all the time. <laughs> just be nice. Remember, oh, yeah. be kind. I am inside me. I'm not kind. I just think it's funny to take the the mick out but on the outside. I, I think someone out there will laugh. I, I'm only doing it for the laughs. Right. Well, don't be so th- hungry. Thirsty. I was going to say that. But I stopped. <laughs> right. So I'm anyway, thirsty for a George laugh. Clark. He does this thing that once you notice it. You can't not notice it. Love that space. And I don't want to tell you what it is, but I'm going oh. to tell you what it is. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of every segment, when he's talking about these little rooms he goes in, the people have built. Spaces. Well, spaces. Yep. He'll do this. So here I am inside this little caravan. <laughs> it's beautiful in here. And you can take the shield off the wall and use it as a table. <laughs> oh, he does a little laugh. Yeah. <laughs> he does a little <laughs> laugh after everything he says that's not funny. And then there's, there's loads of room for your fat head. <laughs> <laughs> there's but even room in there's even room in here for my fat head <laughs> <laughs> but what are the, can you stop talking about his head <laughs> but one of the things I like the most is you can pull the bed down and use it to sleep on <laughs> 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 that's a good observation Steve hey before we move on to another film yeah. did you know that two elf bars a second are thrown away Two elf bars. The vapes, the disposable vapes. What? Right. Remember when everyone used to smoke? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. I know what vapes are. And then <laughs> people <laughs> said that smoking wasn't healthy and it's not good for oh, the environment. Uh, health bars. I thought you said elf, elf bars. I, I did elf. E L F. All right, okay. So they're called elf bars. Uh, the little vapes you throw away. I don't know. People never heard call of them it. elf bars. I've never heard of it. Disposable vapes. All oh, right. Why so, the yeah. fuck are they called elf bars? I don't know. That's the company that makes them, I suppose. Oh, no, there's loads Unless of Unless they're made by elves. <laughs> well, that makes more sense. I'm going, to, yeah, I'm going to, deep, I'm deep dive into this and find out about how elves... Two seconds are thrown away. And did you know that we all gave up smoking to become more healthy? And now that's not as healthy. That's destroying the planet. And it makes me mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Have you ever had a kinder surprise? Yes, I've had a kinder surprise. No, you've had one. Yeah, I've had loads. What's the best toy recently. you've ever got? Toy. What's the best toy you've ever got? Have a Kinder Surprise. Oh, that's a fucking weird thing, right? I I never cared for the toys in Kinder Surprise. I just loved the fucking chocolate. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I just I'd get I'd get like yeah, I knew I had a toy. I I, I just found it extra special because it had this fucking pointless toy in it. I'd be like a fucking toy <laughs> and just eat the chocolate. Cement so, mixer. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Little plastic cement mixer. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And I just put my little willy in it and uh, young age, yeah. 
I mean, I Roger t- Moore's micro penis <laughs> in ah, a plastic Kinder surprise the, cement mixer. The thing I love about Kinders the most is I can put my little penis in this <laughs> this big cavernous shell thing that they give you with it, the toy. Wow, loads of room. <laughs> uh, my Roger Moore's fleshlight. <laughs> I could do this all day. <laughs> I could do this all day. <laughs> Have you got another thing to talk those, about? Do you remember those k- condom machines? In, you seen those condom machines in the pubs when they uh, Roger Moore, and they're saying Roger, you should Roger Moore because you've got I condoms. Like, yeah. When I first come over to this country, yeah. I thought the urinals were to drink from. <laughs> Aren't they? What a uh, fool! Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> to be fair, you know that. To be fair, I, mean, I don't think a chimp's gonna. Lose out too much. Oh no, didn't out. matter. We're like dogs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we can just eat and drink anything. I've seen loads of chimps just Good licking, stomach. It, licking each other's piss out straight. Yeah. Just drinking each other's we piss don't care. straight out of their what's it? Hey, I know what we can do a quick nationwide advert. <laughs> what? <coughs> what, what, what? Why? What? I'll start it. I don't. You're not seeing those nationwide adverts. Yeah. They're real people having real conversations. Oh, right. Okay, yes, yes, yes. What's yes, wrong sorry. with you? Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, so, uh, you don't remind me. I see all the prices are going up. Yeah, yeah, I know. They have been for ages. It's, yeah. it's a bit of a struggle, though, isn't it? See, I don't think they are very real conversations. See, the prices are going up. It's a struggle, isn't it? Well, it's it. yeah. day and age. Yeah. <laughs> do, they, do they have to be northern? If they're struggling, do they have to be northern? I no, mean, but I'm doing a different character. I like to do voices. <laughs> ah, the fucking thing. Um, okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right. me too. Do you want to have another go? Your right, it is a very struggle at the moment. Uh, no, don't do that. Oh. Do a northern guy, like uh, me. Okay. Yeah, That's you're right. It's, it's fucking, it's dire, isn't it? Do they swear in yeah. the adverts? No. no. Hey, I see all the prices are going up. <laughs> I know, what are they like? Prices, I mean, nationwide. Hi, obviously. We're here for you. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Yeah. Hey, oh, guess good. what? Did you know that Ken Loach directed a McDonald's advert? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I'm laughing, but uh, I, is that true? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And then he went on to make the film McLeibel. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When he was struggling for money in the 90s, he directed the McDonald's advert by the woman shopping, and she's saying, Do you like that? And the husband's waiting, going, Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. hungry. <laughs> Yeah, that'll do. You maybe I can that. find that. Maybe Ped and Bot can find maybe. that. Maybe. Do you like that? Yeah. yeah. Do you like this one? Yeah, it looks nice. I'm not sure. What about these? I like them if you like them. What's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm just hungry, that's all. You're always hungry, you are. Know? What do you think if I had high shoes? Like, you know, sort of. You like that? I do like it, but well, do you? Well, let's have that then. I love it, really. <laughs> Honestly. He's really. driving me, man. Well, look. look. Big Mac. I'll have a Big Mac, please. hundred percent beef, a hundred percent big. Sometimes only a Big Mac will do. If you get a, a milkshake, I can have some of it. No, no, no. The choice is yours. What do you think? And then he made McLeibel all about McDonald's <laughs> yeah, right. and the coffee thing. And oh, right. You know what I'm That's talking about. That's interesting. Yeah. I like to give you little yeah. nuggets. K- k- <laughs> Where's our McChicken sandwich? It's not here. Can't find it. Why haven't you got a chicken sandwich? Get out! Why don't you find a chicken sandwich for him? I can't. Six nuggets, please. <laughs> Six nuggets, please. No, nah, nuggets. Get out, go find your own bloody nuggets. I uh, can't afford. <laughs> I'm working for Amazon. I can't afford it. I'm delivering. I'm always working. Six nuggets, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Times are tough. They've stopped the benefits. Six nuggets, please. <laughs> You put our kez in the. You've deep fried our kez and put in McChicken sandwich. McKez sandwich? Oh, Six no, nuggets, please. McKez sandwich, please. I watched something else that's quite strange. There's a Nathan. Man of Word with Nathan Fielder. Yeah. On the rehearsal. Yeah. And I think he's done his own show and it's called Paul T. Goldman. And I watched the first episode. I'll say that again. We'll put a picture up. Yeah. Paul T. Goldman. Yeah. And it's about this man <laughs> who. Meets this woman online. There's a theme today. It's all about online and Tinder. Yeah. And she, he finds out that she's got a prostitution ring and she's all lying to him in secret. Yeah. And then it's weird because halfway through that sort of story ends 
and he just starts making up a story about her and the mafia and human trafficking <laughs> and none of it's true and he plays yeah. the own parts yeah. I can't really explain it it's but fucking you've difficult have to explain because he's it shows him talking about it but then making a thing about it at the same time with actresses playing the people that played the, act, the, the people he's talking about in real life and then he's talking to them behind the camera offset and everything it's fuck it's meta head fuck it's like cynic doki new york it's weird well not quite it's not quite as head fuck as that but it's yeah it's but it's, it's quite entertaining and watchable but the main guy is a very weird guy like uh he's, he's not acting is he it's just he's just a weird guy or is he acting i don't know it's paul t goldman <laughs> is he just is he just an actor playing a guy doing that i don't know. Is who he, knows <laughs> who knows it could be but uh no he's a real he's a real guy you can tell by his real weird like interactions with people he's very like he's not very he's socially awkward isn't he yeah so um, that's a good recommend it's weird yeah. worth a watch so one of the things that came from last week's show that came up before greg does his final film of the week was uh after the story of greg doing his bottle with his teeth oh, yeah. he wanted to hopefully if he can put this forward to parliament talking about politics uh do greg's law called uh, what was it called again, Greg? Never do that. Always do this yeah. campaign. Yeah, yeah. So what is it Never again? do that. <laughs> so yeah, I need to put my mic down for this. Well, I'll just explain. Why do you put your mic down? Yeah. Because Greg used to open bowls with his teeth. And that's what caused the problem with his molar. So it's never do that. Always do this. <laughs> Greg's law. On the surface. <laughs> so like that. So it's basically just to raise, it, raise awareness that you shouldn't open bowls with your teeth for yeah. younger people. Because it will it'll cause a hairline fracture. You'll go like, ooh, you feel like the big man on campus. All the girls are cheering. Going, yeah, yeah, kiss me next. And then 30 years later, you're like, ow. This is and what then, happens. And you're making a fucking show about it and showing disgusting pictures of your teeth. So that's going to be called, not a law, but Greg's campaign. Yeah. And hopefully if you push that forward, you can get on BBC News talking about oh, that. Do it like this. Do it like that. Boom. Do it like this. Yeah, no, like it's that. never do that. Oh, always do, do this. this. Sorry. Never do that. Always do this. Should learn my own Greg's campaign. campaign. Yeah. Greg's campaign. Greg's law. Greg's law. But it's not like really it. law. No, just, it's just, just strong advice. Right, I've just got one more for you. Yeah. What's the first thing you do when you have the first mouthful of a delicious fresh takeaway, Chinese or Indian. Mm. Oh, I'll do mine first. You do yours first. I'll do mine. I thought you were asking me. Yeah, I'm asking That's you, but I want to show you mine. Okay. Right, mouthful. Mmm. Yum, mm. mm. tasty. Mmm. We do a Yoda impression. Mm. Did I say like Yoda? Mm. Yeah, tasty. Mmm. You do, do a head So you do an impression of a horse and Yoda. No, I do a head wobble. Mm. Like tasty. this. Mmm. <laughs> No, I don't do anything fucking weird like that. Just pretend you're taking a <laughs> mouthful of your Chinese. I'll, I may do this. Mmm. That's nice. That's nicer than I expected. What, you say that to yourself? Yeah. Mmm. That's nicer than I expected. Oh, look. I've got cardboard cut out of myself. We're friends, aren't we, Greg? <laughs> I don't need anybody as long as I've got me and my cardboard cut out of Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said to myself. Oh, very good. <laughs> uh, and now we know. <laughs> <laughs> so have you got the final film before we do our song? Yes. Uh, yeah, I want to mention No One Gets Out Alive. And uh, it's a Mexican horror film. I can't remember much else about it. A girl stays in a house where other girls have gone missing. And that is, yeah, that's what I remember. It was original. I remember the, the thinking... It, Horror films, it's hard to be original. It's like, people die, it's scary, etc. But And the, the house thing, people going missing or whatever. It's done, the thing that's behind it, the uh, the main horror thing that's behind it is quite interesting. And it's just well well directed and and not predictable. You don't know, you're not like, oh, that character's going to do this and that character's going to do that and blah, blah, blah. It's, I really liked it, but I was kind of surprised to see, again, that critics, usually, I, I mean, um, critics recognise good stuff, but... I, uh, what did uh, R RT and IMDb give it? What are your scores for No One Gets Out Alive? And then I'll tell you what the true critic score is. My score it. would be a four star. I thought it was a solid, uh, yeah, solid four star. Uh, so that's 80 for me. So on Rotten Tomatoes, you give it 80. And IMDb, what would you give it on? No, that? I'm giving you my score. Oh, sorry, my score 80. is 80. So it's, 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 either, it's either 8.0 or 80%. I'm giving it well, 80. IMDb yeah. gave it 5.3. Yeah. And Rotten Tomatoes gave it sixty-two percent. Well, I'd, I would go with I would go with Rotten Tomatoes there. It's at least a three star to 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 rate it two and a half. I don't want to always go back to stars because, but yeah, um, 
yeah, no, it's it's good. Take it from me. If you've liked anything else that I've ever or we've ever watched, if you know me, then you'll like it. If you don't know me, you'll like it. If you don't <laughs> know me by now, now. if you don't know my a song. If you don't know my film suggestions by now. Is that going to be our final song for the week? You'll never... No, it's not the final song. Oh, okay then. (laughs) What is it? Well, thank you for watching everyone this week. We'll see you when we're back again. We'd like to finish with a very emotional moving song that we think you'll enjoy. And it's called Time After Time by Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. Sorry, Cindy Lauper. Do you want to be counted in, Greg? Uh, Yeah, go on. Three, two... A three, two, one, three, two, a three, two, one, go. Okay. Lying in my bed, I hear the clock tick and think of you. Caught up in circles, confusion is nothing new. Flashback, all nights, almost left behind. Suitcase of memories. Time after, sometimes you picture me I'm walking too far ahead You're calling to me I can hear what you said Then Then you say, go slow And I I fall behind The second second hand unwinds If you're you're lost, you can look and you will find me Time after time if you fall, I will catch you. I will be waiting. I will be waiting. Time after time. After time. If, if you're lost, you can look and you will find me. Time after time. If you fall, I will catch you. I will be waiting. Time after time. After my pictures fade, my pi- oh no, my picture fades, and darkness has. Turn to grey Watching through windows You're wondering if I'm okay Now secrets stolen From deep inside, deep inside And the drum beats out of time I don't think that's how it goes If you're lost you can look and you will find me Time after time If you fall I will catch you I will be waiting Time after time what a I've been, Gregoire! Toodaloo! Well.